Okay, good afternoon, everybody. It's wrapping up two-minute drill in our Wednesday practice in preparation for Cal and um, open to questions. Let's go to Eric Scopel, 247 Sports. Mario, I wonder if there was any more clarity on, on some of the injured players. I know you mentioned Adrian was likely not to be available this week, but any more clarity on players you mentioned uh, on Monday? You know, we're still assessing a bunch of them. I think it'd be unfair to them and to us and to yourself as well if I, if I jump to conclusions. Uh, I feel like they're progressing really well, and several are taking uh, part in practice. So um, in the next 48 hours, we'll know for sure, and we'll certainly try to get to that information as best we can. But uh, we're still evaluating a bunch of guys, and there's so much progress with them that we – you know, we're hopeful for some good news. James Krapia, the Oregonian. Mario, just to follow with that, won't get into specifics then with Drew, but just the, obviously it impacts it inside line, whether he plays or not, whether he's able to go, just uh, who's kind of next in line there due to just the, the issues at that position. Is that MJ? Is uh, Nate get in the mix? And, and does Jackson, who is kind of working inside and outside, does he go inside just because of the, the depth situation at inside? Yeah, all those names are part of the mix. You know, they have been throughout the course of the year. We just got to continue to assess and evaluate where we are uh, throughout the course of this week. And then make those decisions, you know, and put have the pieces in place uh, to have the next man go up whenever that does, if it does happen. Matt Preem, 247 Sports. Mario, yesterday Jalen Red said that the difference between this year's team and the previous teams is that uh, guys aren't, aren't as maybe confident that they're the best player at their position on the field at that time and that they need to have that confidence of, hey, we can dominate. It, is that a byproduct of just a young team and you know, growing and learning the, the processes of, of, of a season? Well, I think mentality and, and a guy maybe um, says something like that. It refers to maybe a couple of guys, you know, that aren't quite at the physical and mental level of some of the other guys that have played more and that have experience. But I don't uh, – I don't relegate really that just to young guys that don't have experience. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, mentality has to be real. It has to be based upon what you do, you know, from a performance standpoint, from your effort, from your technique, fundamentals, your toughness, how you finish plays. So I don't think you could separate the two. You know, I don't think you could separate the mentality from the actual performance and production. You know, we, we certainly have areas of improvement that we're working on. I, I think football will always be that. So it's not anything you shy away from or you – you know, you kind of sit back and say, man, I, I wish that was better. Of course, you always want to get better, even the things you're doing well. But it's, it continues to start and end with effort and focus and work on those things so that that can help someone gain confidence. Ryan Thorburn, Register Guard. Mario, you didn't have much time on that final drive, but I'm just curious if you would have hit a big pass play like what kind of range does Cattleman have or is Camden Lewis kind of your long field goal guy? What, what situation would you have there in a long field goal to tie the game? Well, those guys can both and have hit 50 and have even hit a couple of 55 yarders that, you know, we were, we went into that game kicking Cattleman. So he was going to, if we got in range, we were going to kick him. Eric Scopel. Mario, when you flip on the tape and, and watch the Cal offense, I know they started slow against UCLA, but it looks like the numbers have improved every week. What do you, what do you see there? And obviously, well, I think the most experienced quarterback you face is, is Chase Garbers. Yeah, I don't think that uh, that their first game is, is any indication of what they are as a team. I think they – I don't even think they practice together with the lines, uh, the lines of scrimmage. And so you see their run go from 87 yards to their second game at 120-plus, now they're at about 240 in their last game. So I see a very well-organized, well-coached, and a tough physical team that has speed and length outside at wide receiver. Um, very versatile tight ends that will block you on ISO as well as split zone you, reach you, and stretch the field in the passing game. Real good blockers in the perimeter as well. Um, they do have some really good offensive linemen. The quarterback is experienced, um, and he's, he's an accurate, tough guy that he does a great job with the offense. Again, he's accurate with the ball. He understands coverages really well, gets them in the right protections. Um, just their offense is really, especially this past game, they're rolling, and they have a lot of talented players. James Krepia. To follow on that, Mario, uh, some of their other offensive personnel that either haven't faced as much or uh, just in bigger roles, the lead receiver, 11, Crawford, and the running back, the, the freshman, Moore, 28. Uh, what have you seen from them on, on offense? And then defensively, obviously, the three stars, uh, 
dang good and buying them 8, 19, 24. Just what have you seen from all those guys? Explosive football players, you know, really good play. They got really, they have really good talent, you know, certainly I think it was no secret that uh, going into the season, you know, there was a lot of attention surrounding their program and as it, as it warrants because they've done a really good job uh, recruiting and they've done a really good job developing football players and you know their coach really well. So, you know, we, um, we feel they're as good as any team that we have played. Uh, and certainly in some areas, you know, some of the best players that we've played against as well. And so, and I think our team is always going to approach every game that way with a complete and utter respect for the opponent, understanding that all the teams that we play are going to have really good football players. Eric Scopel. Mario, I, this is a lot of these guys' first loss they're coming off of here. I wonder if you can go back and reflect on maybe your first tough loss in college and kind of what the days were after that and how that maybe motivated you and, and how you responded on the field the next week. Yeah, I, you know, I, to me, losses, if they don't fuel you, you're not a competitor. If they don't provide the type of motivation, you know, the ill feeling in your gut of going out there and getting better, not just talking it or feeling it into existence, but – if it doesn't motivate you to go out there and perform better by what you invest in practice, and I, I honestly believe you're the wrong guy and the wrong guy for this program. So, and I, I feel that our guys have had the right mindset in attacking and approaching this thing. It should hurt. It needs to hurt. And you need to also make sure that it's behind you, that you learn your lessons and you go forward and you attack the processes that go with betterment. Uh, sulking and all that other stuff and carrying that stuff over your head it doesn't exist. You have to, you know, you have to have a, a form of amnesia as you approach the next opponent and you got to get on it quick. And that's what we've done. Andrew Hobner, KZI. Mario, one of the things Jalen also kind of said yesterday was that, you know, the, the quicker fall camp run up changed or altered some of, you know, the, the demeanor work, the culture work, the, the kind of swagger work. How is it different, you know, when you're, just focusing on on games instead of like you said technique and fundamentals but also building that that culture that swagger and moxie in guys how is it different in season than it is in fall camp and preseason well I think the question I think you just answered it how is a a two-week fall camp differ from spring practice winter conditioning the summer training sessions the incoming freshmen uh your mindset program a full fall camp with your guest speakers and your motor, it's, it's vastly different. Now, that being said, it's, it's the year of adapting and going forward. So those things have to be found in different forms. Those things have to be generated from within because you can't have team meetings and you can't have, when I say team meetings, I'm talking about indoors and your guest speakers and outsiders coming in. You can't have your mindset sessions that, but that's all right. You have to find it in other forms, in the way you practice, in the way you construct your messaging for the team, in the way you attack and approach your training session. So, but in terms of, are they different? Yes, they're different. James. What are your assessment on uh, two special teams units, Mario? Uh, kickoffs and, and how that's been going the last couple of weeks and punts because I realize it's only two punts, but in the second half, there was a lot of hidden yards there on those two punts. Uh, your evaluation of those two units. Not good enough. Ball placement is you know, first and foremost, the most important thing because your coverage patterns are designed as to where that ball is going to be placed. Uh, we didn't get enough out of both the, um, you know, the kicking part or the punting part. And then if it doesn't go exactly like you want it, you got to get down there and you got to cover. You got to shed blocks. You got to avoid. You know, you got to make sure that you're physical at the point of attack and knock people back and get the guy on the ground. So, and neither one of those were they were they good enough. So, that's an area that we've been attacking and approaching, and it's got to be better. There's no uh, it's cut and dry. Ryan, Mario. Normally, when you have corrections to make and improvements to make, you know, for example, with your defense, you have seven, eight, nine games to build that into a championship defense by the end of the season how is the approach different when you're already down to your last two regular season games and you got to get better well you just got to get better brother you know there's no I don't know there's no there's no detour that gets you there right you, you got to attack it dead on you got to go straight into it and um, just really assessing honestly and truthfully what you really need to do better that can make the whole 
overall thing better, right? And it always starts with technique, fundamentals. It spills over into mentality and toughness and then relentless effort and finish, right? All those things got to come together. Um, it can't be spotty and it certainly can't be inconsistent. If it is, then the result will be inconsistent. And that's something that, again, is approached holistically as a program because the whole um, the whole trying to say it's here or there, it's everyone's got to take it starting with myself and we have got to improve it and we've been on it. Um, and I, uh, back to what kind of we've always, the way we've addressed it, whenever there's something that's not up to our standard, we attack it and we go forward, you know. Time for one or two more. Uh, Jerry Thompson, Ducks Illustrated. Yeah, Coach Anthony Brown, Butterfield has not seen the field for, for obvious reasons, but uh, how are they, are they, have they been improving? Uh, are they ready to go? I'm sure, sure they're ready to go, but I mean, have you seen a lot of improvement since the beginning, even though they haven't been on the field? No, it's a good question. You know, those guys are really good football players, you know, and uh, the season has taken, you know, we're, we're playing in really tight games for the most part, you know, so we have stuck with our one quarterback. But I can honestly say those two guys are really good football players. And if they were playing, we'd have all the confidence in the world in them. That's the honest truth. Last question, Warren Williamson, Oregon Duck Football News. Mario, mental fatigue is a real thing among, amongst college football programs. You guys have been leading the way with no cases of, of the virus. How is your team mentally as you go into these last couple of weeks? Is there any, have you seen any fatigue? No, I haven't seen it. I think uh, anytime you play football, right, it's, it tests you. It pushes you. Um, we made a decision way back, regardless of circumstance and situation, we're just not going to give in. I don't mean to sound cold and I don't mean to sound insensitive. I just think we have a greater responsibility to these young men that this is our opportunity to have our own class kind of class on the grass, right? The football is what it is. And with all the stuff going on in the world, the very worst thing we can do is allow forgiven. Just to allow, well, okay, well, because this is going on, it's okay not to do the very best we can to keep ourselves face, uh, safe and to keep our protocol at the highest level. And that's not going to happen, okay? And that's because that's how I would want it for my very own son. I would want him to be challenged and pushed regardless of circumstances and situation to do and be the very best he could be without caving in. And I think our guys, for the most part, have done a pretty good job of that. And there's very few seconds that go by in the day where we're not hammering that that part because that carries over into more than just uh, preventing contracting COVID-19. It, it just spills into the things in life that they're truly going to be faced with when it's time to take on the responsibility of being the head of a household, right, and stuff like that. So, Thank you, Coach. Appreciate your time. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Be safe. Have a great day.